Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I am a veteran family systems therapist. I have authored a nonprofit educational website called Break the Cycle of Inherited Psychological Wounds and Ignorance. The first of eight uh, self improvement lessons on that website has to do with explaining the concept that normal personalities, underlying normal, are composed of quote, subcells, unquote. This is an alien idea to most people, including many mental health professionals who think of personalities as being a single entity. One exception that's emerged recently is the documented reality that some people have a condition that used to be called multiple personality disorder, or MPD. It's now called dissociative identity disorder. Uh, when you first are encounter the idea that your personality as a normal unique person is comprised of a group of some cells uh, similar to players on a sports team or members of a drama group or an orchestra, that can be kind of disorienting and even frightening to some people. I want to offer you some of the evidence that has convinced me as an initial skeptic there is no question about the reality of personality subcells in normal, unique people like you. Um, if you're skeptical, which is an understandable, normal, cautious reaction, just review the idea that in the last 25 or 30 years, Science has progressed to the point that we can now take pictures of living brains in action. What those radiographs show, PET scans show, different regions of our brain activating at different times. Our brains physically are simply an inner wired group of mini computers. It makes sense to me as an ex-engineer that subcells are in reality simply portions of our brain that have unique programs. And when they are activated, we think, feel certain ways, and behave certain ways. And when they are not activated, we act, think, and behave in a different way. Does that make sense to you? Um, have you ever experienced inner voices? I suspect that you may be so used to having thought streams, which are, that's what inner voices are, their thought streams are fragments of thoughts, or thoughts and images. Do you have those? Where do you suppose they come from? Um, do you ever space out? Do you ever sort of lose track of where you are in the real world? For example, if you're driving on a highway for a long time, at night and there's not much distraction and your mind goes somewhere else but your body continues to drive the car safely. Do you ever space out? Do you ever wonder how that happens? Um, do you ever have the experience of mind racing where your mind churns and races and spills chaotic thoughts uh, somewhat formlessly or in an irritating way? Sometimes that can prevent people from sleeping. Does that ever happen to you? I propose that's evidence of a number of subcells all giving thought streams at once, like many students in a classroom all trying to talk at once. You ever experience that? It happens in your mind when your subcells are all clamoring for attention. How about this? Have you ever experienced debating with yourself? I should do this. Oh, no, I shouldn't do this. Or, um, I'd really enjoy doing her, her, her. No, but if I did her, 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 then that would mean that blah, blah, blah. You ever had inner debates? Ever stop to think which parts of your personality are pro and con and trying to argue with each other? How do you sell, settle those? Do you have a negotiator inside that says, now you two, listen up, we're going to solve this together. Do you have somebody like that? Many people would like to, but don't. How about the common phenomenon of obsessions? An obsession is 
your mind's stubborn way of continuing to focus on a subject, even though other parts of your mind say, let it alone, let go, stop. And some other part of your brain says, no, no, but we have to keep thinking about something. Have you ever had an obsession? How about the common experience of self-criticism? You ever do that? Do you have an inner voice in you that says, you stupid dummy, why did you do that? You should have done this. This is wrong. This is bad. How about perfectionism? Do you ever have thought streams that continually point out your failings and how you didn't do something perfectly? You had some feelings that went along with that? Has that ever happened to you? In my experience, that's a common manifestation of a normal guardian subself called the perfectionist. That's all she or he does all day long, 12, 24 7, is point out how you could have done things better. A normal sub self. How about this? Have you ever experienced doing something and thought afterwards, why did I do that? I acted against my better judgment. Ever try that? Ever do things that you regret? Ever do things impulsively and wish you hadn't? That's evidence of sub-selves overriding your wise, prudent, true self and doing something that your true self says, you know, really we shouldn't do that, whatever that is, like tell a lie, for example. Ever done that? And then regretted it? How common is that? That's universal evidence that we all have sub-selves, all of us. Have you ever um, had someone comment, I, I don't know what came over me, where they shifted their thoughts, their feelings, their moods, their values, suddenly or over a period of time, and they, quote, turned into a different person? Has that ever happened to you? Do you know someone that says that? As a therapist, I've heard a number of troubled spouses say, my mate turned into a different person after we got married. You know anybody like that? I claim that's subcells in action. How about having different moods? How do you explain the reality? Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad, sometimes you're bored, sometimes you're excited, sometimes you're really focused, sometimes you're feeling vague and apathetic and numb. How do you explain that? Different parts of your brain activate different hormones and cause your different moods. That's how I explain it. Uh, see what you think. Do you, any, do you know anybody that has appeared to you childish in mood or in thinking or in behavior? In my opinion, that's sure evidence that there are inner children among us and they often can become dominant and control our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. When they quiet down, we return, hopefully, to normal adult behavior. Inner children, a type of sub-self. Have you ever experienced what some people call a still, small voice, a hunch, an intuition? Those, in my opinion, are sub-selves giving you thoughts, images, senses about something important in the world. You ever heard somebody describe you or someone else as, you know, she has different sides. She has an intellectual side, she has a creative side. She has a fun side, she has a really sober side. People having different sides are manifestations of being controlled by different subselves in different situations. Here's one that intrigues me. If our personalities were simply monolithic single things, when we greet each other, we would say, Hi, how is you? Singular. Instead, we instinctively say, how are you? Plural. Think about it. 
If you're skeptical about the reality of subcells in general, or in your body and in your life, I encourage you to read an article that goes into more detail than I've just done here in my nonprofit educational website. Here's the link. Try it out. See what you think. See what your subcells think. Thanks for watching.